do a little test video, see how they look there. Doing stuff, cutting things. Welcome back to Plants Not Plastic. I'm Nikita and I show you how to make recipes that are delicious, inexpensive, simple, and healthy. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make an easy, healthy, and super tasty vegan mac and cheese sauce. There are actually a lot of vegan cheese recipes online already. There are unhealthy cheese sauces or less healthy cheese sauces that are like cashews or fake diet cheese or those kinds of things that are gonna taste a lot closer to an actual cheese. I'm talking about the category of cheese sauces that use vegetables, which is what mine is, um, but they're really just using potatoes, carrots, onions, um, throwing into a blender with nutritional yeast and calling it a cheese sauce. Um, I think those are really a lot more like a blended vegetable soup over pasta. What I really think is missing from those is that cheese is rich, thick, salty, and has like a tang to it, um, which is part of what makes it so good. Um, so what I've done is I've taken that base concept of a recipe and have spent quite a bit of time like adding some things to it and refining the flavor so that it comes out much, much closer to having all of those things. My recipe comes out rich, savory, thick, and has that acidity to it that I think that the other simpler recipes are missing. This recipe is also super easy. It only takes one pot, a blender, and minimal chopping. I'll have some nutrition facts at the end of the video, but this recipe has three to four times less fat than a boxed alternative, be it vegan or not, and three times more fiber. Um, if you want the full nutrition details though, you can go to my website, plantsnotplastic.com, where I'll have a full nutrition label that links out to Chronometer. Okay, so to make this recipe, you will need three medium gold Yukon potatoes, peeled and rough chopped, two small to medium carrots, roughly chopped, quick zero waste sidebar. We actually buy carrots about once a week, pre-chop them and put them in water in a mason jar in the fridge. Um, they'll last for easily <laughs> up to two weeks. Why is it dripping? You just have to switch the water out every couple days, but it will keep them crisp, sweet, and fresh. Three whole cloves of garlic, a quarter of a sweet onion, roughly chopped, one Roma tomato, roughly chopped, a third cup of nutritional yeast, a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, an eighth teaspoon of turmeric, a half teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar or white vinegar, and a half teaspoon of yellow mustard. You can also use a tablespoon of wheat or oat flour. This will give it a thicker consistency. You're gonna start by taking all of your chopped vegetables and putting them into a medium saucepan. Then you're gonna fill your saucepan with water until it's just covering your vegetables. You're just gonna cover your pot, put it on the stove and bring it up to a boil. Once it gets up to a boil, you're going to reduce it to a simmer and let it cook for 30 minutes. After your vegetables have boiled for 30 minutes, um, you're gonna take it off the heat um, and let it cool for at least five minutes. I've let mine cool down for a half hour because I'm using a blender that doesn't have any way to vent out the steam. Um, like it's basically airtight once I put the lid on. So if you have something like a Nutribullet or this is from Ninja, um, I would try to let it cool down for longer. Um, if you do have something like you're using a blender where you have that like pop top that can come off, you can wait just like five minutes for it to cool down. If you want it to cool down faster, what you can do is remove the lid and stir it um, every so often. That'll release some of the steam and help it to cool down faster. So then what you're gonna do is you do not want to drain the liquid. Um, you wanna hold on to it because it's gonna have a lot of the flavor that's come out as the vegetables have cooked. It's almost like you've made a broth, so you wanna use that liquid to keep the flavor in the recipe. I think the best way to do this is to use a ladle. Um, you can pour it in, but you just wanna make sure that you don't overfill your container. Um, I leave like a half to a third cup from the top, like where the like max line is, so that I have enough space for my spices. If you, can't, if you can't get your full mixture to fit in, this is a 32 ounce container or 32 ounce blender. If you can't um, get it to fit all in here at once, you can 
put as much as possible, put in your spices, and it'll blend down after you've blended it so that you should be able to add the rest. I have my wet ingredients first and then my dry. Um, and I do that specifically because my blades are on the bottom um, and I wanna make sure that nothing sticks to the top of the blender. I'm just gonna blend it on high. The trick with this is to blend it for a pretty long time. So I have a, a pretty decent high-speed blender and I blend it for about 30 seconds. If you have an older blender or one that is not quite as high quality, um, you'll just need to blend it for longer. Because the sauce, because the sauce comes out pretty thick, it actually coats the noodles pretty nicely. We obviously came here for a mac and cheese recipe. Um, the way that I like to eat this is actually with blended cashews over the top with some chopped spinach. Um, the sauce also though can be used just with like veggies or chips. I also really like to have it um, with my Anaheim chili recipe and make chili mac. Is this mac and cheese going to be as rich as Daya or like a restaurant mac and cheese with butter and cream? No. Um, is it going to be something that you can make repeatedly at home without feeling guilty and having it be easy and cheap? Absolutely. When it comes to the cost um, for this recipe, um, making this entire thing of cheese sauce is $4.61 and it makes about six to eight servings. If you add it with a whole wheat pasta um, and have it as a whole meal, um, it's gonna cost you about $1.16 per serving. This pricing is compared to um, going and buying like a boxed alternative. The two that I'm thinking of are either the Daya Vegan Cheesy Mac or the Kraft Original Mac and Cheese. For the entire box for those, which is gonna be the equivalent amount for that $1.16, um, the Kraft is $1.69 um, and the Daya is $4.99. As for the nutrition facts, if you're using a whole wheat pasta per 500 calories, my recipe has just 5.3 grams of fat and you get 13.7 grams of fiber. Again, comparing it to the two boxed options, um, the Kraft Original Mac and Cheese, if you make it according to the box directions, has 22 grams of fat and just 2.5 grams of fiber. Um, and the Daya Cheddar Style Cheesy Mac has 15 grams of fat with just 3.3 grams of fiber. I also think that it's important to note that per 500 calories from my recipe, you would get to eat twice as much volume as either of the boxed options. So that's it for today's recipe. If you like this video, please do subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when I put out new content. If you try it out, let me know by commenting below. You can also subscribe to my blog at plantsnotplastic.com as well as follow me on social media. All of that information is detailed below in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. The wagons? What is it? Wagons? But is... <coughs> Being vegan is expensive. It's wasteful and expensive. <laughs> it's difficult to cook most of the food and... It requires you, you to have it. a lot of specialized tools in your kitchen. And once you have cooked the food, it always tastes... It's like, it's like eating really expensive cardboard. Dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, uh-oh. Good. Cool. It also looks kind of like, you, like little... Little like every fingers? Time, yes. Like, <laughs> like if there's ever a, like a killer movie, like they I'm, have preserved... I'm not uh, vegan, I actually just like preserve and eat little fingers as a snack. Like little mini hot dogs. Right. In water. I was gonna ask, how many people did you have to kill to get that many fingers? None. Where are they fingers from then? They're still alive.
I just, I just, you know, take off the finger and then send them back home. That almost sounds, that almost sounds sweet. 